because now I need to know the fumbled numbers. Let's see if we can quickly Google. You think we can Google real quick? Let's see. Um, this isn't Heineke. This is John Walford. See if we get any numbers here. The Jets, uh, this JetsFix.com, they scouted this man. Let's see if they got any uh, any tips on their fumble, on this man's fumbles. Arm strength. Walford does not have a cannon for an arm, but uses a pump fake. Folks, we just, we just seen this. We just said this. Look at this. Look at this um, scout here of JetsFix.com. We said exactly what this scout said. Walford does not have a cannon for an arm. We did not see that, but uses the pump fake to get good effect. He's got the good pump fake. I love it. To get the ball downfield with adequate touch and timing. I love it. I, I can definitely see that. I agree with that. Um, he will usually put enough zip on the ball. On outbreaking routes, throwing a tight spiral on the pass. We kind of saw that as well on some of those one-on-one uh, -on -one routes when the receiver kind of, you know, won it right off the rip. Accuracy. All right. Wolford's ball placement seems to be pretty good. As we said, that's what we saw. That was pretty good. Um, he can hit players in stride. At, folks, we're saying everything that this man's saying in stride. What we saw on that play that we kind of had to slow it down to really make sure. But he caught it in stride and they carried him for 20 yards extra after the catch for the touchdown. Um, he can hit his players in stride and has good understanding of, of when to lead a receiver and when to put the ball in a spot where only he can make a play on the ball. Once again, we saw that multiple times, that diving end zone catch that we saw, um, the one that he was in double cover that went incomplete or no, it, it got caught and he was only, he was the only uh, person that was able to have a shot at the ball. So we're seeing everything that this scout is seeing. Love to see that. All right, let's see what else. So now that we know that this man's a trusted source, he's seeing everything we're seeing. Now let's see what he's seeing that we didn't see, you know, of him watching, you know, every single game and not just, you know, three random highlight packages. So let's see what we get here. Under pressure, as noted, Walford was sacked over 100 times in his first three years. <laughs> over 100 times in three seasons? Holy cow. No wonder why he developed a running game because he's like, I got to do something here. We see his rushing stats. They go from negative 151 yards his first year, getting sacked 100 times, 67 yards his second year. So he had to develop that running game because he was getting sacked over and over and over again. All right. Um, but his line got better at the, you know, his last two years. That's why he was able to run for 600 yards his last year. He's able to move within the pocket to extend the play just long enough for his arm to, un uh, to uncover down the field. All right. Walford has shown an ability to anticipate and get rid of the ball quickly, but still holds on to the ball too long at times, waiting for plays to develop. And once again, we saw that in that first bowl game, waiting, 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 buying time in the pocket. That was like a solid six, seven seconds of him just buying time in the pocket. And then he makes the wrong decision because of it. So this man is right on par. We're seeing everything he's seeing. And I love to see that. Um, all right, let's see what else we get. I do want to see if he talks about the fumbles. Um, all right, let's see what else we get here. Footwork and technique. I see this. We haven't broke that down, so let's see what this man says about it. Walford admits that his footwork was not ideal in his first three seasons, and his improved play his senior year is probably in large part due to the hard work he carried out during the offseason. So this, I mean, that makes perfect sense. His footwork wasn't good. He wasn't throwing the ball accurate. His stats were awful his first three seasons. He got that fix, and now he had his best season. So, you know, getting better, learning behind Jared Goff, learning behind the mind of Sean McVay as an offensive, you know, kind of head coach. So, yeah, John Walford could have success here the last time we seen him play was in kind of 2017 in college we are gonna you know, kind of go through and watch um maybe a preseason game i think of when he played um or was that tim heineke or taylor heineke i'm getting them confused yeah so taylor heineke was on the panthers and this man we haven't really seen him in any real nfl situation so <clears throat> all right what else do we get here 
Wolford's throwing motion is sound, and he has a quick, compact release. All right, that's always good. Now let's look at his decision-making. We haven't really seen the best decision-making, but let's see what we get here. Walford played in a simplistic offense in college, and this Rams offense, it's a little simplistic as well. They don't do, you know, they don't have like a ton of formations. They really kind of have one kind of solid formation that they like to run. They like to run a lot of tight formations as well to kind of, you know, get out to the outside in the corner, the corners. Um, so um, he may have success here if, you know, if it's a, you know, simplistic offense that he ran in Wake Forest. I don't really think this Rams offense is really kind of that, um, that cerebral. All right. In his senior year, he started to have a lot more success on tight windows. That's also, you know, something good to know, getting better, you know, as your years progress. And once again, he says, you know, it's a byproduct of him having improved on his footwork. So this is this is great information we're seeing here. Now we're kind of buying into John Walford a little bit more. Every, You know, this scout is seeing exactly what we're seeing, and we're seeing him getting better every single year, and so is this man. So we can definitely get behind this, folks. Now we're kind of liking Rams plus three and a half again. Okay, mobility. This is going to be huge here. All right. Walford is a good runner, runner, capable of scrambling out past the second level and picking up chunks of yards on read option looks. In one game last season, he passed for 363 yards and scored three times and rushed for another 163 yards and three more scores. So we put up six touchdowns one game, three rushing and three, uh, three throwing. Here's how dangerous he can be. All uh, right, looks like they were trying to have a nice little gif here of him running, but it's uh, expired. It's no longer exist. Wolford's running ability also enabled him to escape the pocket and roll out. Yep, we saw some of that. He will battle to keep plays alive, and now that's kind of where the fumbles may come in, so hopefully he breaks those down. Scheme fit. There might be some level of adjustment required for Wolford to be ready to handle a pro-style system. But he's regarded as smart and has a good command of the huddle. So this is something he might be able to cope with. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what you need. You need to be the leader, a vocal leader. You need to be able to command a huddle. And that's where I don't know if Jared Goff is, you know, kind of you know, at his kind of max potential, kind of commanding an offense and being that leader on field. So this is kind of why I'm saying I think I like the quarterback shakeup a little bit of John Walford in this Rams kind of offense now. Maybe this change at quarterback could have, you know, huge success here. Alrighty, injuries. Anything he, with his injuries? <clears throat> Walford has dealt with plenty injuries during his time at Wake Forest. That's never good. Although he showed some toughness by often playing hurt, he ended up starting 47 games. Out of how many? I want to see uh, how many he didn't start. That would have been better. Um, he was knocked out of a game in his freshman year when he landed on his head at the end of a scramble. So once again, maybe not getting down when he should. That's uh, something that we're going to have to kind of look at. And he missed the Clemson game with a shoulder injury last year. He also had foot ankle injuries in the past. All right. Intangibles. Walford's teammates and coaches speak in glowing terms about his intangibles, praising his smarts, his toughness, and team first mentality. That's exactly what you want in a quarterback. So this is great here. This is a high pressure game for the Rams. He knows what it's going to have to take. He's He knows that he has to be the one to step up. So this is great to know. He's smart. He can kind of understand all the situations going on, all the narratives going on, the pressure that you know is going on for this game. All right, he has no character red flags, but had a uh, tangential association, I don't even know that word, um, to a scandal when it emerged that the team's former announcer had been feeding information about the playbook to the other team, and his father suggested that this might have been a factor of him being sacked as, wow, wow, his own offensive coordinator, offensive play caller was giving the other team the playbook so they could sack the quarterback? Wild! <laughs> Wild, if that's true. Holy cow. All right, conclusions. All right, let's see what this man's... We're kind of gonna, we're kinda gonna take what this man's conclusions are as, you know, the gospel, because he's been, he's been exactly on the ball of what we've been saying. So, here we go. All right, <laughs> the Jets may consider Walford. This was in 2018, I believe this was written. Yeah, um, 2018, so. All right, here we go. Um, Jets may consider Walford for a practice squad spot. 
and some playing time tomorrow night so long as he picks up the system quickly enough. That's probably the best case scenario for him in the short term, but if the Jets end up carrying just two quarterbacks for all or part of the year, then Walford will likely have a key role as the scout quarterback and will learn a lot from traveling with the team. That's far from guaranteed, though. Um, and he, he'd be defying the odds if he could establish himself even as just a backup while being less than six feet tall. Oh, he's not even six feet. Not great there. Um, Got to be at least six feet. So the man's not that tall. Russell Wilson height, he's about 5'11", 5'10". Kyler Murray, 5'10", 5'11", Tua, 5'10", 5'11". Um, all right, nevertheless, he has good intangibles and could be able to handle game manager type assignments, and he's likely to be asked uh, to in the second half of tomorrow night's game. So this seemed like it was like preseason or something. All righty. So, yeah, John Walford, I love that they're saying that, you know, he can be kind of a game manager type assignments because that's exactly what this Rams game is. John Walford, you haven't played the entire year. You're coming in week 17 when it's a kind of must win for us. Just just be a game manager. Do not turn the ball over, which is, you know, something he's cleaned up, but something that has been in his past. Um, so don't turn the ball over. That's what John Walford needs to do. And we're kind of liking what this man's saying here. They don't break down the fumbles, though. That's the that's the entire reason we kind of got here. Let's see if we missed it. Anything with fumbles here? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Nobody's bringing up the fumbles, and it's got me a little nervous, folks. You can't just show me one fumble like he did in that bowl game and then not have any stats on his fumbles. Um, he is five and eleven. He is five foot eleven. As we said, he was under six foot one. He was listed as six six foot one, but actually measures five and uh, eleven and a half inches. That's funny. Um, all right. So John Walford, we're kind of liking him. Now let's see where the spread is finally ended up. Is it still Rams plus three and a half? Let's see if the spread has changed any. Uh, Rams Cardinals. It's come down half a point. We got it. You know, we locked it in. At we locked it in at Rams plus three and a half. It's come down to Rams plus three. So a lot of people are betting Rams plus three and a half. That's why it's coming down. So, yeah, I still like it. I think, you know, uh, I, I have agreed with this man. Let's get this man's name. You don't got a name. You just kind of dated it. Unfortunate. Um, yeah, so well done to this man <laughs> for doing this. Let's see what the comments say. Anybody agree, disagree? Um thanking them for making the post walford's mom has got it going on is that true interesting um walford is better than hack i don't think hacks in the league either so possibly yes uh, all right he seems to be elusive how is he at fielding punts <laughs> They're going to turn the quarterback into the punt returner. This man wants Paul 72 wants to turn John Walford into a punt returner. Good luck with that. All 